friends, this is Bijou Baker. I'm Maria. So today we're doing question and answers. Um, I really contemplated doing this live, but I gotta tell you, oh, oh, I changed my mind against that only because um, I feel I feel like if I don't have my helpers, Jean uh, Prisanti of Beauty and Stamper, and um, my daughter Denise, last time I did live, they were right there to help me feed, feed me things because my computer was so far from my old eyeballs <laughs> and instead of seeing words I just saw like um doot, 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 doot. <laughs> yeah I couldn't read the words so it's like I'm if I try to do it myself I'm just gonna mess it up so I'm gonna answer the questions that were sent to me and you guys thank you for taking the time to send me questions um they were like all over the chart which is really fun for me because I mean I'll tell you almost everything about my myself I don't mind at all I mean if I did I shouldn't be here right I'm thinking okay so I'm just gonna shoot them out uh, a couple of them um, have been answered in other videos but that doesn't really mean anything because you could have missed those videos <laughs> so I'm so you've watched every single video I've made <laughs> don't worry about it I don't <laughs> I'd be a little scared if someone did. Okay, so um, here we go. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna shoot them out in no particular order. So Mary Comby, and I know I got that wrong, Mary. I'm sorry, sweetheart. Um, wants to know where I got my love of baking. Well, this is one of my favorite questions. It's one of my favorite stories. Um, about a hundred years ago, when I was like seven or eight, nine years old, um, growing up in growing up poor, we never got to get special treats or anything like that but to be honest with you I didn't think twice about it you know at that time you know in the 60s our only goal was going outside to play that that was it nothing else mattered well while we we're outside playing they'd have the ice cream man come who who came by the ice cream man would come by and um we we didn't get anything so we'd we'd wait for everyone to get their stuff and then we'd get back to the business of playing well, they had something called the Helms Bakery Truck that came by and they blasted their special sounding horn, or maybe it was just special to me. Um, when I would hear that, knowing very well, we did not have 10 cents to get a donut, you know, or for 10 cents, you could have got like an eclair or something big. Um, didn't matter, we didn't have it, but but here was my process on the, on the Helms Bakery Truck. They'd pass by and they would have cakes and cookies and pies and breads and donuts and just you name any sweet baked good and they had it and they traveled in this little uh, van kind of truck um, it was very specific um, and delivered so they'd honk the horn moms would come out and buy their bread or whatever and here's what happened I would stop whatever I'm doing and rush to that truck not to buy anything but when he opened up that back doors and that smell just assaulted my nostrils and I could, my lungs were never big enough to accept the amount of smell I wanted to inhale. And then he had um, drawers and drawers and drawers and drawers and they were as long as the, the van, which made they just like went out and out and out. I think he went for three blocks. You know, they were just forever long. That memory of all those cookies and eclairs and cream puffs and just things that I didn't know. I didn't know what they were. I just knew that smell. Holy crackamole. That did it to me. And um, I knew. I just knew. I don't know how to go about being around that smell, but I want that smell. And um, little by little, you know, I started I started baking. Not Not because I was aiming for that but just because I really enjoyed making something out of nothing. That's actually with everything in my life. I can I love making something out of nothing. So in a nutshell, uh, my baking career is, is thanks to the Helms Bakery Truck. Ugh. If you guys know it, let me know your memory of it and, and how wrong I was about that horn. Uh, don't tell me I'm wrong because that's a great memory for me. <laughs> now don't mind being lied to. <sighs> I can smell it now, man. Mm. Okay, 
Okay, so that's that's my uh, love of baking story. There's so much more to it, but that's that's one I think. That's that's what kicked it off. Okay, so uh, Moonchild. First off, I'm digging the name. I just feel so groovy when I say the name, Moonchild. Is that Moonshadow? Moonshadow, Moonshadow. Okay, I'll shut up. Okay, um, what made me grow my hair long and stop dyeing it? You know, I got a lot of questions about my hair. So, I, I've always had like jet, jet black hair, like blue black, jet black hair. And then my hair started getting gray. And with the jet black hair, you're really gonna see your your gray roots, and that's a lot. Of, that's a lot of gray. I mean, that's a lot of gray. So I started realizing how much money I'm spending on hair color. That's insane. I don't live that kind of life, and my hair grows freakishly fast. So I'd go get my hair done, and two weeks later, I'd have an inch. Uh, as my granddaughter would call it, a, a skunk stripe. Grandma, your skunk is showing. It's like, <laughs> how's that for love? So every two weeks, come on. And then I got to just doing it myself, you know? Well, that's, that's work I just didn't want to do anymore. So I stopped dyeing it. And then, you know, rather than letting it just go, you know, white, white, and then jet black, um, I did lighten my hair like brown, and then eventually it just all went away and this is just what God did. So he's, he's my colorist. Um, and I, I could not be happier with the lack, um, the money I saved with the effort and the frustration and the time, all that savings is just peace to my heart. So, so that's, that's great. Tiffany D. Tiffany D, I just love you to pieces. Would you ever consider doing a makeup tutorial? <laughs> yeah, okay, look at my face. There's like lots of wrinkles and flaws and I have no problem going out without makeup. I'm definitely not that person like, oh, I can't go outside without makeup. No, <laughs> no, I like makeup. I have fun doing makeup. Um, You've seen my videos there many times when I'm not wearing makeup, you know, or just very, very subtle. And I've just been exploring with it more and just, you know, all that time and money I saved on my hair. I have a little extra time just to play and goof off. And so hmm, this was just kind of fun shade I did today, you know, but whatever. Would I consider it? I I might. I don't know that I'd get a following. Um, although there is, there is a huge difference in these young, beautiful girls who do makeup versus of a gently aged, can I say that? Can I say that and be nice to myself? Okay, good. A gently aged or gently worn face. Wrinkles. Um, wrinkles are hard to kind of work around uh, with makeup, you know? Um, so I, I would, I will consider it. If you guys really want me to, I will. Um, but and, and do me a favor, if you don't, save the comments that are like, just stick to the kitchen, Maria. Just, I love your comments, but if they're going to be mean, um, I'll do without them, okay? I'm just, I'm just saying that. In, in general life, if your comments are going to be mean to anybody, just don't say them. Nobody, nobody needs to hear anything negative. So I will consider it if I get enough um, interest in it, okay? Uh, I'll consider most anything if you know, if you guys are interested in it. I like, I like giving you guys what, what you like. That's fun for me. Um, Melinda T asked about if I'd ever considered doing a cookbook. Now, let me tell you about my cookbook, okay? Um, I actually do have a cookbook in the makings. Um, I have all the recipes, I have all the pictures, I have everything done, and I took it to the printer, and I was so, so terribly unhappy with the end result. Not the printer's job, my job, my work. I was not happy with the way it worked out. And so I kind of felt defeated. So I stepped away from it for ooh, a while. <laughs> too, too long, too long. I've let it defeat me. Oh, that's cute. 
<laughs> I've let it defeat me. So um, I will be getting back to it, going a completely different route. And the reason I felt defeated is because I had this phenomenal way of presenting this cookbook and it was, it was absolutely fantastic. But the printing of it, no cookbook on earth is worse what it would worth what it would cost me to print these and make even the l slightest like a dollar profit you know um it it so i gotta kind of rethink how i want to do it i want it to be practical above all else so yes i i will be getting a cookbook out i've been saying that for so long it's embarrassing now so thank you for asking though <laughs> okay um Rhonda t can you do <laughs> can you do anything as well as you can cook and bake? Nobody can cause trouble quite like me. <laughs> I, I don't know what I do well or not. I just do. I just do. Someone would always tell me, is there anything you can't do? And I said, well, I can't piss out a campfire. <laughs> what a dork. Well, I can't. I mean, why lie? <laughs> So um, there's tons of things I can't do and ton, tons of things I can do, but I don't really, I don't really think about it. I just do it. So does that answer? Probably not, no. That's the best I got though, because yeah, it's the best I got. And then she wanted to know my facial regime. Um, well, sometimes I'll wash my face. <laughs> Um, soap and water. I, I don't, I'll use a cream, I will use a moisturizer. Um, hold on one second. Sorry, there was a distraction and I didn't want to confuse you. Um, I'll use a moisturizer, but not religiously. <laughs> there are times I sit at my makeup mirror and I'm going, oh, I should probably try to be pretty today. And I wash my face and then, it's, oh, let me put moisturizer. Oh yeah, that's going to do it. <laughs> do what exactly I don't know I I don't have I don't have a makeup regime um I don't have any kind of regime I don't there's nothing except for my coffee in the morning and my bible in the morning everything else by the day is is fly by night I just kind of guess <laughs> but if I don't have those first two things in the morning my day is not gonna go well so give me Give me my coffee and give me Jesus and I'm good. Um, and then my age, she asked my age, 60. I, I don't have a problem being 60. I've never had a problem being any, any age I was. I just, it's, for me, that is just a number. I don't know. Um, Carol Ann B, how long did it take you to be, to do such perfect cakes? Carol Ann. You're clearly a cake decorator. So if you're asking this, that means you're already working on it, right? And that's, that's, you, you're there. I mean, you just, people always ask, um, well, what's the difference between your cakes and my cakes? My cakes don't turn out like yours. The only difference between, Carol, the only difference between your cake and my cake is practice. That's it. That is it. The technique's the same, the tips are the same, the borders are the same, it's just practice. And I, when I first started, <laughs> I would <laughs> I would get my toothbrush and I would make a little border on my toothbrush. If I had anything that would squeeze out, ketchup, mustard, <laughs> I was squeezing and practicing something somewhere. Um, and I don't know if if you've seen my videos where I tell you that what I would do is I would take some, um, well, at that time, all I had was short, well, actually, I just had lard and flour. Um, and I mix those together to, to get a uh, icing consistency. And that's all I did. I would fill my bag and I would just fill a cookie sheet with borders and lines and letters and squiggles and just everything. Scrape that back off and put it right back in my bag and do it again for hours and hours. For me though, that was fun. It was a fun and relaxing thing to just, you know, do borders and then I'd practice my roses and, um, you know, my roses weren't even really 
good in the beginning until I started working as a cake decorator. And the girl I was working with showed me a trick that, that took my roses to the limit. And um, my roses were always just so flat. Well, when you make a rose, in, in the link below, I show you how to make a perfect rose. Follow that. You guys practice that and you're going to be just top notch. But uh, sometimes just the littlest hint from somebody is all you need to, to kick up your game. So, um, Carolyn, just, just practice. I promise you, before you even know it, you're going to be presenting these amazing cakes if you aren't already. And I'm kind of thinking you are. So you, you press on with that. Um, okay, before I even go on to the next question, let me step back just a bit. Um, the house I live in, it's a busy house. There's almost always something going on. So when I have to click off real quick, it's because <laughs> my dog was barking or someone was calling me or whatever, life, life, that's it. Okay, um, Cameron L, are you single or are you dating anybody? I am single and I am not dating anybody and I'm okay with that, I, That's it's by choice. Um, maybe in one of my story times, I'll, I'll fill you in. <laughs> on a few reasons why I'm single and then you'll say oh yeah okay go ahead and just you sit there girl you you be good <laughs> yeah no I'm I'm very content um with my life right now and I'm spending I, I when I'm single I'm able to truly um god this can sound so corny and I don't mean it and it's not like I'm you know some holy roller but as a single person I can dedicate myself to um serving God and in that it's taking care of Lynn but right now that's my that's my job that's my joy and um, she she needs me so I'm okay with that that's it's all good when the time comes okay um, Marjorie do you struggle with any health issues Marjorie sweetheart can I ask you are you okay um, I, um, I I just I wanted to hug you so bad when you, when I read that. Um, I'm I I don't I um uh, I am really really blessed to be six years old and not have anything wrong with me. I mean I'm really blessed and I know it and I know it. Um, so my heart my heart just I, I just want to to love you so much right now, Marjorie, because whatever it is that you may be going through. God bless your sweetness for, for thinking about another person. I, I, I dig that about you. Um, a while ago, when we moved to Arizona, there was a shit ton, which is an actual weight measure, by the way, of stress on me. I, I don't ever get stressed, so I didn't know what it was. I thought I was having a heart attack. <clears throat> so I told my daughter, I said, Mia, because we were all moving as a little village together. Um, and I said, listen, I have to go to the ER. I think I'm having a heart attack. And she's looking at me like, you know, I said, whatever happens in the ER, stick with this plan. This is a good plan. You guys move to Arizona and you stick with that plan. That's, that's what's going to make me happy. So I go to the ER and, you know, um, <laughs> Left her dumbfounded, but uh, they ran every test they could run in the ER, and I'm thinking, yeah, they're gonna they're gonna tell me I've had three, you know, minor heart attacks, or they're gonna tell me my blood pressure's through the roof, or maybe I have you know diabetes. Just all right, let's just let's have it. And um, doctor comes in with the results, and I said, all right, let's have it. What's um what's the dealio? Um, he goes, there is absolutely nothing wrong with your uh, heart? I said, okay, well, my blood pressure, what's, he goes, your blood pressure's fine? I go, well, then my sugar, my cholesterol, which one, which one is it? And uh, no, nothing, absolutely nothing. The only number that's not where it should be is the number on my scale and that little booger is just not gonna budge. Um, so I said, all right, well, get out of my way. I have stuff to do. <laughs> this happened again maybe two months ago now. 
and I went to the ER because I thought something was going on. Got the same results and the doctor sat down on the bed and started talking to me. And he goes, what's going on in your life? I'm going, <laughs> well, um, and I just kind of, you know, that, nothing, I, I couldn't think of anything that was going to be like, oh, you know, I got a lot on my plate, but I always have a lot on my plate. And he, he gave me orders. He goes, you stop and be kind to yourself and, um, or, or you're not going to be able, you're not going to be any good to anybody. And I do know that, but, um, so I do, I do now stop. And I do show myself kindness. We got a little puppy, and the puppy loves to sleep on my lap. So he and he really makes me stop. Um, so see how things all just work out. Um, but Marjorie, God bless your heart. I just I'm just gonna keep you in prayer because because I know you're gonna do great things, girl. Okay, um, Killian, Killian, can I just say I want that name? I want to name that cool. <laughs> Killian asks, how many kids do I have? And if I'm if there's under three, why not more? Killian, you're killing me. I have one. Um, because of my pregnancy and my labor, I have one. My mother had 14 and she popped them out like Pez dispensers, you know. Um, I had, When I was a teenager, oh, I couldn't wait to get pregnant. Was not going to get pregnant before I got married, mind you. But I couldn't wait to get pregnant because they are always so, they glow and their women are just so beautiful. And it's like, oh, so now I'm pregnant. Okay, I was 24. And I was like, oh, I can't wait. I'm going to glow and be beautimous. And uh, no, mm -mm. I was horrifically sick. I'd get motion sickness at the time when I had a waterbed. We'd go driving and I'd get nauseous. If we'd go to dinner, my husband would go pay um, for dinner and I would go lose dinner. And then on the way home, he would go, oh, I'm so full. And I'm just thinking, Jack in the Box sounds good. <laughs> so then just cut to, you know, nine months and it's time for delivery. And I am in the induced labor on Tuesday. I'm there on Tuesday. And when you get induced, you get induced. Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, he says, we're gonna have to induce labor. On Tuesday, I'd ask, can't you just um, give me a cesarean? No, 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 it'll kill you and the baby. I said, well, I guess I'll deal with it. Friday, they said, we're gonna have to induce labor, or we're gonna have to um, give you cesarean. I'm going, okay, remember, cause you said, uh, okay, um, so, by this time, I was crowning. She, the baby was crowning, and he's shoving him back up on Sunday morning. They finally did it. And uh, shoved her back up and gave me a cesarean, and all I wanted to do was sleep. So, <laughs> I have one kid, and, <laughs> and that's why I have one kid. Okay, those are my questions. I absolutely enjoyed my time with you. I did get one last question, um, and it was asking me um, if I had a foolproof uh, Alfredo sauce recipe. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm making Alfredo sauce tonight. So stick around for that, and you'll have my foolproof Alfredo sauce recipe. It is so good. And easy it really I promise you it's easy so um so that's it those are my answers to your questions and um, you're always always welcome to email me I love getting your emails especially when you're yeah I have I have a, a cluster of, of uh, chickies who send me you know they're they made their grandkids cakes or they're making someone's wedding cake and they show me and I just I get so excited about that I just I love it for you so all right um, keep your questions coming. I'll always answer. I'll always answer. All right, my friends. I absolutely adore you to pieces. You mean the world to me. I hope that your Sundays are full of hugs and laughters and green lights and fresh coffee. Until next time, happy baking. Ah.
Ah, oh, that was fun. Don't forget to like and subscribe.